It's a big problem in Orange County, and it's probably one of the biggest problems the county faces based on the amount of victims you can see that are out there on a daily basis and that are brought here to the county. Certain cities have what they call tracks that the, that the women walk. However, because of the internet, every city in the county has it. We've investigated cases from beach cities in South County up to you know, the northern cities in the county. You talk about the venues that exist here, and it's a vacation spot. Disneyland, the Angels, the Honda Center, the beaches, an airport, it is the recipe for us to be and continue to be the customer base for quite a long time to come. Human trafficking is the deprivation of one's liberties for either forced labor or commercial sex. I think the biggest myth about human trafficking, prostitution, is that it's a choice and that it is a choice that they are willingly going into. It isn't a choice. It is complex, involving people that have suffered through some trauma, and now that insecurity is being worked. Our unit last year, 2018, saw over 373 misdemeanor and felony cases combined. I think I can give you an example of, in particular, this minor. She started when she was 15. Her life was great, and her dad was her hero. And when he decided to leave the family, five siblings and the mother, her world fell apart. And what did she do wrong? She felt lonely and empty. She was angry at her mother. She was rebelling, spending a lot of time out in the streets. She did not even understand how she was being used. All she saw was independence, money, and her trafficker being nice to her and giving her attention and giving her time. Maybe it was taking the place of her dad, filling in the gap of what she felt she was missing her father. If you ever look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, they got it down to a science. These human traffickers are master manipulators. So they pull up to this girl that is a runaway from either home, the foster care system, group homes, you name it, they ask her, that she need a place to stay. Come up and they already have a hamburger with them. So you got food, shelter, and here I'm gonna take care of you, the safety part. And then you couple that with a 12, 13, 14 year old girl from the foster care system, ran away from home. Now you can see why they are so successful at what they do. As soon as we change to seeing them as victims as opposed to prostitute, everything changes for us. We're seeing youth that have been trafficked from the age of as early as five by caregivers oftentimes, and so that's a life of chaos, that's a life of unpredictability. So they don't trust people very much. They're very guarded, and understandably so. But slowly and surely we build that rapport with them, and they're able to open themselves up to accepting services. Originally, we, Orangewood started with the lighthouse and we opened in October uh, 2016 and it has been amazing and transformative to the young people who have been in the program. We have now developed uh, what we call a continuum of care. So we have prevention, early intervention, stabilisation and thriving. And at each stage, but we try and really support them to move along that continuum with the different services we provide. The Lighthouse is a transitional living program for transitional age youth, which is 18 to 22, survivors of human sex trafficking. The ultimate goal is to reduce re-entry back into the life. We offer you know, a space for each young person to be whatever they want to be, and often it's overwhelming. They have these choices to go to school or work, go to college, you know, they change their mind every day, I want to do this, I want to do this, because they have a choice now, versus before when they were in life they, did, they didn't have choices. It's so awesome because that's the space they could do that and come home and if it doesn't work out and things just fall apart, that's what the Lighthouse is, is a place to come and just be. Project Choice is creating healthy opportunities and inspiring change through empowerment. 
which means that we meet survivors where they're at with a strengths-based and trauma-informed care approach and support them with whatever they may need, whether that's financial support, residential support, advocacy. We really just want to be their personal cheerleaders in that way. Project Choice really is around preventing young people from being sex trafficked, so we work with a lot of at-risk youth so they can make informed decisions and understand how traffickers recruit. We've seen youth that um, have come from a life on the streets where you know, they know nothing but you know, surviving by selling themselves or being sold. And they come to us and they're able to open their own bank account, practice self-care, see what that means, receive individual therapy, really take care of themselves and prioritize themselves and take those steps that they need towards the rest of their life and a future of independence and, and thriving. One beautiful response we had from a young woman that entered the lighthouse, she walked in and she said the house is so beautiful and that she didn't deserve this. And for her to say that, it was just like, wow, like, you know, we're doing the right thing. Like, she does deserve this. And now we know what our job is to let, you know, teach her and encourage her that you do deserve this. And this is your home. You know, the biggest thing that's going well in Orange County is recognizing that the problem exists here. Because once we do that as a community, we're going to start taking steps at resolving it. So that's huge. I feel that we've just started. We've just scratched the surface and we have so much more to do.